Hey folks, how's it going? We're checking out more of the Vicar of Dibley. Hopefully you guys have a fantastic day. Enjoyed the last episode. Thought it was a great start to Series 3. She finally made it into the sack with David's brother. Uh, forgot his name. Is it Simon? Yeah, she finally made it into the sack with Simon. That didn't go so well, man. He definitely played it. He was cold-blooded. At first, I wasn't sure if Dave was actually concerned about her, you know? Or if he just if he was jealous, like if he has feelings for her. I can't remember what I said at the end, but I think it was... Because he's just a judgmental person in general. But I think he was more concerned and being a bit more judgmental. I don't think he was jealous. Uh, because I think he knows how his brother is. That Simon's a bit of a dog. Like he cheats on girls and dates multiple women and stuff. And I think he figured that he was going to do that to her. And he was just concerned about her. And concerned about her feelings, you know? She handled it really well. She didn't cry in front of him. She didn't show that it hurt or anything. She went until he was gone. And went through all the ice cream and started eating all the candy bars. And missed a bunch of services. And said she was going to leave Dibley and stuff. But she didn't show him that it hurt her. And that was the best way she could actually handle things. I like the way they wrote it. That she's not going to show that he hurt her. You know? God bless him. Alice is going to have a kid. Uh, we'll see how that goes, man. Uh, I wonder if we're going to get to see our kid before the series is over. Or if we're just going to see her pregnant. You know? I doubt it. I, I think they're going to let us see it. Because that's, that's just, I, I guess, comedy gold. How goofy she's going to be. And she said she's going to flush the kid down the toilet. This is, just, this is so stupid. But yeah, man, uh, looking forward to this one. Let's just go ahead and jump into it. We'll talk about it more at the end. Sorry I'm late, everyone. I was glued to the footy. You know, with digital telly, you can choose your own camera angles. I've just watched the entire Spurs match from right in front of David Ginola's shorts. <laughs> I was glued to the telly today as well. Are you a footy fan then, Jim? No, 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 no. I mean, I was actually glued to the telly. That's big, man. I was trying to build an airfix model of the spaceship Enterprise. How did you get unstuck? Well, I, I, I didn't. I, I, <laughs> right. Now, as we know, last year was a bit of a disappointment. Your juggling, for instance, Owen. Well, at least it was original. No one's juggled with live puppies before. Oh, my God. Or since. Well, I only dropped a couple. <laughs> What's this is a We need this year's show to be a triumph. Well, I think we're one step ahead of you there, doubting David. Yeah. Over to you, Hugo. Uh, Where's that? <laughs> well, six months ago, the vicar approached me, Frank, and Jim yes. to uh, form a Christmas show subcommittee to come up with big ideas. Yeah. And uh, we've been meeting once a fortnight. But they call anything. We had a bit of a breakthrough. Yeah, a Aha! We've agreed the date of the first full meeting. I knew it. And when's that going to be then? February the 10th. <laughs> what, next year? Yeah. After Christmas. Yes. Well, this is very depressing, Hugo. We want this to be the best Christmas ever. I could juggle with kittens. <laughs> they don't mind being dropped. How do you know? Experience. <laughs> swiftly on. Yeah, you scratched we need up. Is for just one of us to come up with one fantastic idea for the best Christmas show ever. By tomorrow. Uh, right. Yeah. I've got it. I've got it. I've oh, done well. I've got it. Look. Listen. Christmas is all about the baby Jesus, isn't it? Mm. Yes. yes, and I'll warn you to be very careful, Owen, before you suggest juggling babies. I was just about to say, he's going to say the juggle babies. I knew you were going to say the juggle babies. Our show will be something very, very special. Uh, well, we haven't quite decided yet, but I'm sure the perfect idea is around the corner. Nice to see me, to see me nice. <laughs> Spoke too soon on that one. All right, I'll Look at man, how far along is she? Love to Julio, by the way. Oh, the freaking <laughs> pop. And Juan, of course. So how's it going, oh lady of the lump? Weird. I can feel it moving around. Ooh. You've never had anything moving around inside you, have you? Oh, a nasty joke is she gonna make? Not a baby, no. <laughs> well, it's amazing. It's almost as if it's alive. <laughs> But it is alive, Alice. Oh, yeah. Oh, Thrillo. <laughs> oh, can you turn that down a bit? It's a funny thought, isn't it? And when they're 70, little babies, like that one you've got cooking in your tum right now, mm. will go all gooey over music like that. I like my music a little more middle of the road. Uh, what would that be? Uh, the Wombles, really. <laughs> right. The kid oh, music. Yeah. They were a great band, weren't they? Yeah. <laughs> Funny thing, you never hear of them anymore, do you? I mean, what happened to the Wombles? I mean, you never see Uncle Bulgaria popping up on later with Jules Holland. <laughs> That's because Uncle Bulgaria was a man in a suit. No, Uncle Bulgaria never wore a suit. 
I mean, there was always a man inside Uncle Bulgaria. Loads of rock stars are gay, Geraldine. Doesn't mean he wasn't a great musician. No, he wasn't a musician at all, was he? It was just a costume, wasn't he? I mean, Uncle Bulgaria's in a box somewhere. Uncle Bulgaria is dead. This girl. I'll finish this conversation before I stab you to death. <laughs> I have got to devise a brilliant Christmas show, something that the people of Dibley will remember for the next thousand years. What? Well, I suppose the nativity's the obvious choice. Well, of course it is, but we need to give it a twist, don't we? Hmm. Have Mary and Joseph in a real stable with real cows and sheep, you know, that sort of thing. Say, wait a minute, that that a good idea. <laughs> to have had your first very good idea indeed. It feels great. Does it? Good. And here comes some more. Maybe. She to ruin it. The wise men can't see Jesus when they come into the stable. Oh dear, your taxi's arrived. And then Jesus can escape from Herod. Hello, Vicar. Oh, hello, Frank. I'd like to audition for one of the wise men. Ready? Here we go. Let us follow it. My noble doing? Why do you do that? Right? What a goofball. Chance, we will encounter the Son of God. Then we will <laughs> worship him. I can't say I quite understand the voice. I was just thinking, I'm playing a wise man. Now, who's wise? Stephen Hawking. Oh, no. I was like, who is he supposed to be doing? I don't sound like him at all. <laughs> that was terrible. Okay. thought about this Frank <laughs> more's the pity can I call you about it it's very good though thank you <laughs> terrible who's next it's Owen excellent can you send him in yes come on man <laughs> right. these are lunatics Owen. <laughs> you've come to audition for the king There were three kings, and you are obviously one of them. That's right. <laughs> are you lonesome tonight? Do you miss me tonight? <laughs> Can I get back to you on it? Just stop. Leg jiggle. Come back to you. Certainly. All right. Would it help if I slept with you? Bro. Um, no. <laughs> Who's next? It's Jim. He's come as one of the kings as well. Oh, right. Well, I hope it isn't Martin Luther King. <laughs> it is, isn't it? Right. He says he'll come back later. <laughs> so, I guess you ought to be blackface. We'd like to play Mary and Joseph. With me as Mary. I actually was banking on you for the pivotal I wish they would have set them out, man. A woman sleeps through the entire thing in another room at the inn. But I want to play Mary. Oh dear, what a shame. You don't actually fit the vital requirements, I'm afraid. For instance, Joseph was a carpenter. And I'm afraid Hugo just isn't, is he? <laughs> <laughs> just oh, finished no. them in evening class. Right, but the crucial thing I fear is that they weren't English, so I'm afraid Mary only spoke Hebrew. How do you lad on I call Harrods? Yeah, just like that. Please. Please? Ah, oh, you screw it. You no, have I'll to. Think about it. I want to play. Right, I've thought oh. about it, and I think it's an excellent, perfect idea. Hooray! Ooh. <laughs> See you on the set, <laughs> Reverend Spielberg. Yes. You don't think your father would be willing to act, do you? Absolutely. Uh, he was rather hoping you'd ask him to play God. Of course. <laughs> of Actually, course. Now I had another part in mind. Yeah, I'm playing God. I'm Alice. I'm playing Mary. I'm Hugo. I'm Joseph. I'm David. I'm Herod. <laughs> I am Jim, <laughs> and I, uh, no, 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 no. Good, moving on. Uh, I'm, I'm Owen, I'm third shepherd, first king, and it's my farm we're performing in for a very reasonable rent. <laughs> Bro. For free. Yes, thank you. I'd like to use some of the rehearsal methods from Brooke's early productions. Brooke Shields. No, Peter Brook. 
He was a director at the Royal Shakespeare Company. I wouldn't mind being directed by Brooke Shields. <laughs> <laughs> this way to the bedroom, Jim. Oh, what do you do? Shut up, Jim. Andre Agassi, get out of that bed, you lazy sod. <laughs> I've got Jim Trot here. <laughs> Uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry I'll, I'll get carried away. <laughs> it's been a very long life with very little sexual experimentation. <laughs> In Brooks' classic productions, there was a lot of improvisation. So let's do a little bit of that, shall we? Hugo, Alice, here we go. Let's clear the floor. Come on, make a big open space. Now, Alice, you're playing Mary. Yes. You're a virgin. And yet you find out you're pregnant. That happened to my cousin Sally. No, it didn't, Owen. She gave birth three times, but she never, ever had sex with a man. Except me. <laughs> <laughs> and me. <laughs> and me, if I'm honest. Oh, no. <laughs> and Alice, so unmarried and yet pregnant, all right? And that very day, who comes home but Joseph, your fiancé, a humble carpenter. OK, and yeah. centre and go. Cup of tea? Yes, please. <laughs> Busy day? Yes, yes, sir. Been carpentering all day. Oh, good. Uh, and yourself? Uh, interesting day? Um, I came home and the angel of the Lord was waiting and made me with child, who shall be lord of all mankind. <laughs> oh, right. Thomas? Oh, please. No, sorry, sorry, sorry. Can I just butt in there, Hugo? Barely a reaction. You'd like a bit more than that, wouldn't you? It's quite big news, right, you right. right. OK, yes, sorry. Just, um... Get your drift. A bit of a turn up for the books, Joe. I'm pregnant. And God, the maker of all mankind, is the father. Oh. Actually, have you got any Terry Musolata? Uh, I'm afraid uh... <laughs> <laughs> You're obviously uh. useless at this. Sit down immediately. I'll be Joseph. Right, here we go. I'll show you how to do it. Hello, Joseph. Any news? Yeah, I'm pregnant. Hang on a minute there, madam. You're telling me you're pregnant? Yes. Well, who's the father, you little scrubber? Come on, who is it? God Almighty. Oh, sure, I've heard that story before. Come on, who is it? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I went to the loo. And when I got to the loo, the angel of the Lord was sitting on the loo. And he said to me, you don't actually need the loo, you're pregnant. Oh, Mary, forgive me. Get away I... from me, you bastard. <laughs> For them. Shall I prompt for this bit as you're playing the angel? Uh, okay, but I am a vicar, Owen. I do actually know it. <laughs> Good, just in case. Okay. Be not afraid. I bring you glad tidings. For tonight in the no, city. No, no, of no, 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 no. That's a pause, isn't it? That's a dramatic pause there, do you see? Well, it didn't look like a pause. It looked like you'd forgotten it. For I am an angel of the Lord. I bring you glad tidings. For tonight in no, the that's the, pause. <laughs> that's the pause. I thought you were pausing, or you stopped right, pausing okay. and you forgot me. All right, look, I'm just going to go back to the beginning, all right? And you three just don't say anything, all right? right? We, we won't say right. anything. No, not right. no, no. Well, not even our lines. Yes, your lines. Yes, your lines. <laughs> Drama crazy. You prompt. Right, right, okay. Well, then, Frank can prompt me, guys. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Oh, no. Right. She's not very angelic, is she? <laughs> Angel of the Lord appeared before them. Be not afraid. No. Be afraid. <laughs> Be very afraid. <laughs> All right. Uh, ding bats. <laughs> Sorry to disturb you, Victor. No, 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 fine. That's um absolutely fine. Um, I've heard that mothers to be should avoid unnecessary strain. Mm. So I was thinking maybe I shouldn't be acting in the play after all because it is pretty stressful. Alice, I'm sorry but you've only got one line haven't you? Yeah I know but I'm really worried I'm gonna forget them and the worry might cause me all sorts of damage internally. Yep, see your point but on the other hand if you leave me high and dry with this play now 
This fist will cause you all sorts of damage externally in the face department. Do you see? Obviously, the choice is yours. I think it'll be OK. Yeah, yeah. I think <laughs> yeah, I really do. Really do. Ah, 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 ah. No, sorry. Can you just sod off now, please? Thanks. <laughs> just someone watch Sean Bean on the telly. I'd like to be alone with him. Uh, isn't he lovely? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the poster. Oh. What do you think? Oh, I don't know about that. What? Well, I just don't think it is the greatest story ever told. I mean, there's that great story about the people whose house was burgled and they thought the robbers hadn't taken anything and then they developed their photographs a month later and they found pictures of the robbers with toothbrushes up their bottoms. Oh. Can I please just remind you all a little bit about the story we're actually telling here? 2,000 years ago, a baby is born in a stable. And yet, during his lifetime, he says things that are so astonishing that millions of people are still living their lives by them today. But most astonishingly, I believe that this tiny little baby boy, and he was younger than I am today, he was brutally crucified for simply telling people to love each other. And the men who killed him thought, that's it, that's the end of it. He's dead, he's gone. And yet, here we are. 2,000 years later, doing a play about his birth. Now, I think that's a pretty great story. Yes, all right. It's a good poster. Leave it as it is. <laughs> Thank you. Although I do admit the one about the toothbrushes is pretty gripping. Perhaps we'll do that next year. <laughs> Thanks. Frank, plays the toothbrush. Yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, I got down for that, bro. Let's do it. Oh crap, is she gonna live If you feel like uh, improvising, taking a just hard go for it. Alright. Oh, I think it started. Exactly like that. Very good at it. Well done, Alice. Alright, everyone, get on the hell! As you know, we haven't charged anybody anything to come in. So at the end, there'll be two little angels here waiting at the gate, and all donations will be welcome. Thank you. Uh, I'll be slaughtering Daisy here tomorrow to, to do order your Christmas beef after the show. <laughs> Very much. I need to bring down a move. But also, I am great with the child. Oh, I forgot it. In that case, I have a stable you can use. <clears throat> In that case, the vicar. Has a stable. <laughs> <laughs> Are you big so bets? Mary and Joseph went into the stable. The innkeeper so kindly offered. Oh, I can feel it coming. Oh, that's good. No, I really can. <laughs> she was good, wasn't she? Very convincing. Yes. I was quite good, wasn't I? No. No. <laughs> Not at all, bro. In Jerusalem, Herod was a cruel and jealous king. Soldiers, go forth unto Bethlehem and kill all the infants in that region. And so... But kill them gently. <laughs> oh, my God. This is... <laughs> not as cruel and jealous as some would have me be. goof ass. I really love children. <laughs> Indeed, I see some in my court for you. I love you, Harriet. <laughs> <laughs> this is such a in big man. I love you, hair. An angel of the Lord appeared before them, and they were sore afraid. I bring you tidings of great joy. For tonight in the city. I know you, pillar. Joy. Is my call an ambulance? remarkably like the shepherds but who were in fact completely different people approached the stable riding camels <gasps> Vicar. Would you excuse me just one second thank you god we must have some towels owen run up to the house and get some towels i haven't got any well no towels but why would i have towels to dry yourself after a bath i don't have a bath oh <laughs> anyone here have some towels you could use these my entire costume is made of towels. Would you excuse us just one moment? Actually, is there a doctor in the house? I'm a vet. 
You'll do. Could you come now? <laughs> My dead body? Come on, it's common sense, sure. Oh, dear, oh, dear. Oh, well, it hurts. Does it? Is it? Well, next time you get a contraction, you just hang on to my hand really tight, OK? Grip it. Okay. Tight as you like. It's coming. OK? OK. okay. Ooh. Ah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> 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 Hopefully a lot of people donate. Mm. Also, hopefully an ambulance is on the way. I had actually given birth to the son of God. Oh my goodness, this girl. I get a bit of a responsibility. <laughs> no, she haven't. Oh, phew. Well, we've thought about it long and hard. We'd like to name her after you. Guys. So I'm calling a vicar. No. Come on, man. Are they serious? Or Geraldine. Oh, even better. <laughs> yes. Ding bets. Geraldine. Excellent choice. Little Christmas gagette for you. Great. Santa Claus goes to the doctor with a problem. Oh, dear. Yeah. He says, uh, Doctor, I think I've got a mince pie stuck at my bottom. That got there. <laughs> So the doctor says, OK, Mr. Claus, bend over, please. You do have a mince pie stuck up your bottom. But you're in luck, because I've got some cream for that. take it out and eat it. No. That is not hygienic. No, he's not going to, is he? Because it's a joke. They're going to doctors these days. What are they going to be doing next? <laughs> taking out your appendix and having it with... I don't know, bacon and egg. What, you're just leaving planet Earth now? Mm -hmm. I think it's been up Santa's arse. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sticking to brandy snaps. Alright, this is a good episode, man. I figured she was gonna have the baby. I'm pretty sure everybody saw that coming because most people know the whole story. And when she started having contractions and stuff, and the fact that she was pretty far along, you figured she was gonna have the baby in the barn. You, yeah, they were kind of pointing that, you know, they were showing signs throughout the entire thing. And this is very entertaining because they were irritating crap out of her throughout this entire episode with uh, the playing stuff and forgetting lines and everything. And after all that, they still were forgetting lines throughout the entire play. And she had to keep reminding them. That was pretty funny when she squeezed her hand. She's like, oh, you bitch. <laughs> that was pretty good. That was fantastic. Luckily, like, David stepped in, man. He was, uh, it still shows he cares about it, even though he was irritated by their entire marriage. And he calls her like a dink and all that good stuff. Um, well, all that bad stuff. He clearly cares about it because he still stepped up and helped her throughout the entire thing and pulled her, um, the vicar over to help as well. And luckily he woke up and helped too. So everybody got involved and, uh, helped her have the kids. So that's good. Especially like I said, David, I don't know how David cares so much about the character he was playing. Like he didn't want that to reflect him. He just, I guess he just, he's such a politician, you know, like him playing a negative character, he's still thinking about how that reflects him as a politician or as a, as a person that he's trying to hand out candies and stuff like, dude, it's just a role. It just, I, I don't know. It just shows like, <laughs> he's so goofy. Like, oh, I do this. He's trying to change the image of like a, a, a terrible character just because how poorly reflects him. Uh, he's just so goofy. It just seems like, so, is, but it's perfect. It perfectly shows how politicians are. They just only care about how something negatively impacts their image. You know, yeah, uh, it's just goofy. But yeah, man. Overall, this is a this was a good episode, man. I, I enjoyed this. All right, folks. That is it. That is all for this one. Hopefully, you guys are happy, safe, and healthy. I'll see you in the next one later.